Let me tell you, if the tests bring you closer to Allah, then it's a sign of the mercy of Allah, no matter what the test is. And this is why the message I had for my brothers and sisters in Indonesia earlier this week was that let these tests bring you closer to Allah. We would never be able to imagine what they are going through. But guess what? It's a test for us as well. We are one body as Muslimin. When the finger is hurting, the whole body is restless. So what should you do? Number one, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. That's a powerful dua. Alladheena idha asabatum musibatun qalu inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'oon. Allah praises those whom when calamity strikes, they say, well, we all belong to Allah and all of us are going to return to Allah. What did that do for you? It brought you closer to Allah. It made you a better person. Your dress code improved. Your relationship with those around you improved. Your relationship with Allah improved. What happened? It was because of the disaster of someone else. Someone else at times. So, when we witness that calamity, the first thing we call out to Allah, we check ourselves quickly and we remedy our own sickness and illness. And then we quickly reach out to them in whatever way we can. There is a connection between Cape Town and Indonesia dating all the way back to three centuries back when Sheikh Abdullah Abdus Salam was brought here by the Dutch in political exile or banished in other words. Who was Sheikh Abdullah Abdus Salam? Was he not the one known as the Tuan Guru? May Allah grant him Jannatul Firdaus. The sacrifice he made, he was Indonesian. Did you know that? He came from that part of the world. The same people today are struggling. They are our ancestors. Do you realize that? What are you going to do for your forefathers? Will you reach out to your pocket and take out 20 rands and say, you know what? My folks are struggling. Let me do something. Or are we going to say, Allah will help them. Allah helps, but Allah uses some whom he loves to help. That is why when Abu Bakr al-Siddiq, who was the, the greatest to tread this earth after the prophets of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when he was informed about the need of the Muslim ummah at the time, and they asked him, what have you brought along? He said, this is 100% of what I own. Oh. 100% everything. So what have you left back at home for your family? He says, I left Allah and his Rasul. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah will provide. I'm okay, I'm healthy. Subhanallah. What about us? We are okay, we are healthy. You know what? Many of us are drowning simply because we have an addiction to luxuries, not necessities. A lot of us who are struggling financially, Wallahi, I swear by Allah in this masjid, it's not because of your basic necessity, it's because of your greed for that which is beyond your basic necessity. Allah has taken a guarantee that he will provide you your basic necessity. You are upset because you want more than that. Why? We look at John and we look at this one and we look at Peter and Paul and then we look at Muhammad and we and we look at Abdullah and we look at the others and we compare our lives and when we compare our lives we start scratching our heads one side wife is nudging husband next side husband is nudging wife you might want to know why I balanced it may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us all what are we looking for I'm depressed because I cannot eat out every week <laughs> come on some people don't even have the food to eat in every week, let alone eat out. Your depression is connected to something way beyond what Allah promised he's going to give you. Subhanallah. So what I'm saying, learn to be happy with what Allah has bestowed upon you. Adjust your lives in a way that a portion of your wealth can be given to those who are in dire desperate need from your own relatives. May Allah grant us that. Today, we're going to be collecting by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for Indonesia, Palu, in Sulawesi, Lombok, Bali, etc. Those who are struggling and suffering. And I plead with you to reach deep into your pockets in order to give generously 
Allah will recompense it in ways that you have never imagined. He will draw you closer to him. And the best wealth to give is that when you are fearing poverty. You don't know, look, I've got my last so many thousand. But never mind, 1,000 I'm going to give away. Allahu Akbar, why? They need it more than I do. Look at the Sahaba radiallahu anhum. They reached out to each other. In what way? They gave what was the last sip to the other one. Because that is what made them true believers in the Creator. Allah promises that He will continue to help His worshipper for as long as that worshipper continues to help another. You want the help of Allah? How are you helping someone else? Well, I'm not because I need the help of Allah. What? Excuses, excuses. Don't make those excuses. Reach out to those, even if it means with your greatness of character. Develop your conduct. Reach out to those you live with. Greet the people. That itself is a great sadaqah. To smile is a sadaqah. Tell me you can't afford that. The best smiles are in Cape Town. When the elderly smile at you without those teeth. <laughs> May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us goodness and ease. It's a genuine smile. So my brothers and sisters, remember this. You really want help on the day of judgment when the sun will be so hot that people will be drowning in their sweat. Imagine, and I try to picture this. I'm sweating right now, but mashallah, it's quite cool in the masjid. I shouldn't be complaining. We've already complained once. But as we sweat, we feel so uneasy. Imagine if you had to sweat and you were dripping. People would say, this man's dripping. Give him some tissue. Imagine if that became a tap where the water got to your ankles. I can't even imagine that. I don't know what that would be. Can anyone imagine that? Has anyone ever sweated in a way that it even got to their toes? None of us. On the day of Qiyamah, the issue will be so, so difficult that people will be sweating and their sweat will reach their knees. Allahu Akbar. Not only knees, beyond. People will be drowning in their sweat. You want help on that day? Allah says, help someone today on earth. And I will help you on that day. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. You want help on the day of judgment? Qiyamah. Help people in the dunya, no matter who they are. Forget about what color they are, what race they are, what tribe they are, etc., etc. You reach out to people. Allah promises you on the day of Qiyamah, I will reach out to you. You'll be looked up, you'll be picked out, and you will be assisted. VIP. Why? Because in the world you used to assist others. That's the hadith I just read now of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa I call on you, my brothers, my sisters, to help one another. Help those in need. Even if you are in a certain type of need, it doesn't mean that you cannot. I've witnessed beggars. I've witnessed beggars who have been given a few coins. They take out from those coins and give someone else some of those coins. You know what? In the eyes of Allah, they've given more in percentage than you and I. If I gave one rand, one rand is not point something percent of whatever I might be having. And that person from one rand gave 50 cents to someone else. That's 50% of his worth in the eyes of Allah. He gave it away. I've witnessed little clips on YouTube of people, even non-Muslims, who happen to give to those who ask sometimes that which is the last penny they have in their pockets. Just out of the goodness of their hearts. That's why entering Jannah is not only through your salah, through your Direct ibadat, your tilawa, etc. Yes, that is extremely important. It's a pillar of Islam, undeniable. But the hadith says your akhlaq play a great role in your entry into paradise. What is akhlaq? Your character, your conduct, the condition of your heart. So my brothers and sisters, take a look at these natural disasters that happen. Today it's there. May Allah protect us. Tomorrow it could be here. We have a few winds that blow sometimes. Nothing much has happened and we get so, so scared. You know, I'm talking about Cape Town, Port Elizabeth, etc. We get so scared, we get worried. People stay home. But you know what? 
That was not a fraction of what others have tasted. And look how scared we are. Imagine who's reaching out to them. Are you waiting for others to reach out to them in a way that they compromise their values because they need some assistance? Where are those who help for the sake of Allah? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those who reach out. But my brothers and sisters, the point is every one of us shall face challenges, difficulty, hardship. Those difficulties, hardships should actually bring us closer to Allah. And if you want help and assistance, help others who have difficulty. And Allah will definitely help you. You will smile when you see the problems of others and how big they are. Yours becomes insignificant, irrelevant and diminished. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you all. May Allah protect us all. May Allah grant ease to those who are struggling. In all those lands, whether it is the earthquakes, the volcanoes, or even the man-made wars, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help them. May Allah help us appreciate the ni'mah and the favor that we are enjoying in a way that we respect each other and we never compromise the peace.